Hello, hello, wonderful people. It's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biochemistry playlist. After talking about carbohydrates, fat, proteins, as well as metabolism, including glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, glycogen synthesis, glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, ketogenesis, etc., it's time for some review. So, here you have 10 biochemistry questions with answers, of course. So, let's get started. Started. Please get a piece of paper, try to answer each of these questions before I tell you about the answer key, and let's see how many of the 10 questions will you get right. Let's go! This video is part of my playlist called MCAT questions. You'll find biology questions, biochemistry questions, general chemistry questions, and before you know it, you might even find organic chemistry questions. First question is here. Here is glycine and the pKa1 for this group is this number. The pKa2 for this group is this number. If I put this glycine in a medium whose pH is only 1.5, which of the following forms would glycine exist in? This form, this form, this form, or this form? Please pause. Let's talk about this. The pH here is 1.5, which is lower than pKa1 and also lower than pKa2. When the pH is lower, think acid, think H's. So the COOH will exist in the H form, not CO minus, nope, nope, nope. I am putting it in something very acidic, so I will see the H. And I'll see more H's here, so the correct answer is A. Fully protonated and fully protonated. What's the overall charge of this answer? positive one. Remember that each ionizable proton has its specific pKa. So here I have pKa1 and a different pKa2. And at that pKa we have 50-50. 50% protonated, 50% deprotonated. What's the definition of the pK? It's the pH at which 50% is protonated and the other 50% is deprotonated. But what if I put glycine in a pH of 1.5 which is lower than the pKa of each side. So now the pKa is winning because pH is so small, 1.5, pKa will be bigger. Whether it's this pKa, 2.3, or this pKa, 9.6, both of them are greater than the pH of 1.5. Meaning what? The protonated fraction will exceed the deprotonated fraction. So the carboxylic group will be fully protonated, mainly COOH. And the amino group will also be fully protonated, meaning NH3+. And that's why glycine will exist in this shape, making A the correct answer. If you have any problems with this topic, please refer to video number 4 in this biochemistry playlist. The title of the video is Titration of Amino Acids. Question, question number 2. All of the following are sulfur-containing amino acids, except... Pause and try to answer this yourself. How about cysteine? Yes, it does have sulfur. Methionine? It does have sulfur. In fact, the word thio means sulfur. Homocysteine contains sulfur. The only one that does not contain sulfur is valine. Next question. If the mRNA codon is 5 prime AUG3 prime, what's the correspondent complementary anti codon? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Back to basics. Remember, where is the codon? The codon is on the mRNA. And the question just said that the codon on the mRNA is 5 prime AUG and then 3 prime is towards this side. Okay, this is what? Codon. On what on the mRNA? But where is the anti-codon? It's on the tRNA. So here's the codon on the mRNA, which is 5 prime AUG 3 prime, and then the anti-codon will be on the tRNA. So A will pair with U, U will pair with A, and G will pair with C. But be very careful, where is the 3 prime? this side. And where's the 5 prime? This side. So the complementary to 5 prime AUG 3 prime codon is 3 prime U A C 5 prime anti codon. Or I can read it the other way. I can say 5 prime C A U 3 prime anti codon. So it's either this way 5 prime C A U 3 prime or 3 prime U A C 5 prime. Of the choices available, 5 prime CAU3 prime is the correct tRNA anticodon. So the correct answer here is B, as in biosignaling. 
Next, question number four. Which of the following is true about the effect of histone deacetylase? Is it increased DNA transcription into RNA, result in a relaxed chromatin, result in an open chromatin that appears lighter in color, or result in a more condensed chromatin? Please pause. Recall that acetylation makes my DNA active for transcription. How about methylation mutes my DNA, mutes transcription. Next, the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin. U is relaxed and open to you so that it's accessible, so that it's ready for transcription and it appears lighter because it's relaxed, versus heterochromatin, which is condensed, closed, inaccessible, and it appears darker because it's condensed. So let's try each choice. It increases DNA transcription into RNA. Well, deacetylation is the opposite of acetylation. If acetylation makes me active, then deacetylation makes me inactive. So choice A is incorrect. Let's try B. It results in a relaxed chromatin. Well, we said this is inactive. Inactive meaning condensed, not relaxed heterochromatin, not euchromatin. Let's try C. It results in an open chromatin that appears lighter in color on microscopy. Again, if it's deacetylation, it's not active. It is not euchromatin. C is also incorrect. Let's try D. It results in a more condensed heterochromatin. Yes, indeed, because it's less active and heterochromatin is condensed, inaccessible, and it appears darker. Question 5. Which of the following is the rate-limiting enzyme or rate-limiting step in the TCA cycle or Krebs cycle? Is it A. Citrate synthase, B. Isocitrate dehydrogenase, C. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, or D. Succinate dehydrogenase? If you have watched my video on the TCA cycle, you will recall that the star, i.e. the rate-limiting enzyme, was isocitrate dehydrogenase, which converts isocitrate into alpha-ketoglutarate. And because this is the rate-limiting enzyme or the rate-determining step, it is heavily regulated, stimulated by some stuff, inhibited by other stuff. By the way, you can download all of my doozy biochemistry notes on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com, which means the correct answer here is B, isocitrate dehydrogenase. Next, which of the following processes takes place in both the cytosol and the mitochondria? Please pause and try to answer. Is it the TCA cycle, electron transport chain, ketogenesis, or urea cycle? Let's talk about each. TCA cycle occurs in the mitochondrion. What about electron transport chain, also in the mitochondria? Ketogenesis, mitochondrion. Urea cycle, both the cytosol and the mitochondrion. Look at this urea cycle. This part right here occurs in the mitochondrion. Then carbamyl phosphate will enter into the urea cycle by combining with ornithine, thanks to the famous enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase. Then you have citrulline. Once you have citrulline, now you're getting out of the mitochondria and into the cytosol. And then you rotate and go back to the mitochondria. So the urea cycle is one example of a chemical pathway that occurs in both the cytosol and the mitochondrion. And we have talked about this in my video on protein metabolism, proteogenesis and proteolysis. You will find that video in my biochemistry playlist. The seventh question, which of the following is the rate-limiting enzyme or rate-determining step in glycolysis? Is it step A, step B, step C, or step D? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Let's see if you can remember. What's enzyme A? This is hexokinase or glucokinase, depending on your location. How about enzyme B? That's an isomerase, because fructose is the isomer of glucose. Next, from fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1- and 6-bisphosphate, what happened here? Well, I added another phosphate group to carbon number 1. So what would you call the enzyme? Phosphofructokinase number 1, because it adds a phosphate group to carbon number 1. How about enzyme D, which converts fructose 1- and 6-bisphosphate, which has 6 carbon atoms, into two different molecules, 
Each one has three carbon atoms, and these different molecules are glycerol dihyd 3 phosphate and DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This enzyme is called aldolase B, because look at glycerol aldehyde, that's an aldo right there. So which of these is the rate limiting enzyme? If you say C, you are absolutely correct. Phosphofructokinase 1 is the rate limiting enzyme in glycolysis. Question number eight. All of the following are cofactors or coenzymes to alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase except blank. Is it thiamine pyrophosphate, zinc ions, riboflavin, coenzyme A, or lipoic acid? Please pause. Let's talk about this. The coenzymes or cofactors to alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase are the same ones as those for the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And they include my Teflon company. What's my T? TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate. So this is one of the cofactors, which means it cannot be the correct answer. Back to my Teflon company mnemonic. What's the F? It's FAD. And where did that come from? From riboflavin, vitamin B2. So riboflavin is also a cofactor, which means it cannot be the correct answer because they said accept. Back to my Teflon company. What's the L? The L is lipoic acid. It is a cofactor or coenzyme, so therefore it's not the correct answer. And then Teflon company. What's my N? N is niacin or vitamin B3. It's not a choice here. And then what? Co, which stands for coenzyme A. So it's there, which means it's not the answer. This enzyme does not need zinc to function, which makes B the correct answer. Remember my Teflon company mnemonic. The T is thiamine pyrophosphate. The F is FAD, which comes from riboflavin. The L is lipoic acid. The N is NAD, which comes from niacin. And the CO is coenzyme A or CoH. S means sulfur, H means reduced. These are the cofactors or coenzymes for pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And they are the same cofactors or coenzymes for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Ninth question, which of the following amino acids is non-essential under normal circumstances, but becometh essential in cases of phenylketonuria? Is it phenylalanine, serine, histidine, or tyrosine? Please pause. Look, even if you have no idea what phenylketonuria is, anytime you get asked about an amino acid that is non-essential under normal circumstances, but somehow becomes essential under other circumstances, they're asking you about a semi-essential amino acid or a conditionally essential amino acid. If you remember, we divide amino acids into essential, semi-essential, or conditionally essential, and non-essential. Look at the semi-essential. Normal circumstances, I am not essential. You do not have to eat me in your diet. However, in some conditions, in some diseases, like phenylketonuria, I become essential. And of the options that they gave you, only tyrosine belongs to the conditionally essential group. So the correct answer here is tyrosine, or choice D. But look at this group of amino acids. They are always essential. You always have to eat them in your diet. It is essential that you do so because your body cannot synthesize them from scratch. How about the non-essential amino acids? Well, your body needs them, but your body can make them, which means you do not have to eat them in the diet. It's not essential that you do so. But in between, we have those amino acids that are non-essential under normal circumstances, but under some deficiencies, they become essential. Now, why did the question mention phenylketonuria? Easy, because in phenylketonuria, I have deficiency in phenylalanine hydroxylase, which means that I cannot convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. Under normal circumstances, tyrosine is not essential. Why not? Because my body can make it from phenylalanine. That is normal. But what if I have a disease abnormal circumstances where I cannot make tyrosine from phenylalanine because I'm missing the enzyme. Then you will have to start eating tyrosine in your diet. It becomes essential. That's why we consider tyrosine a semi-essential or conditionally essential amino acid. Last question, which of the following amino acids cannot contribute to the process of raising blood sugar during prolonged starvation? Is it lysine, alanine, arginine, or tyrosine? Let me know your answer in the comments. You will find the answer key in the next video, which will be titled five biochemistry questions. You will also find that video in this biochemistry playlist. 
as well as in the other playlist titled MCAT and DAT questions. If you want to see more of these videos, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to my website to download my biology notes, biochemistry notes, general chemistry notes, physiology notes, hematology notes, pulmonology notes. I have all kinds of notes at metacosisperfectsnetis.com. They will help you pass exams. To learn about how your kidney functions, download my renal physiology course, which comes with 10 videos, cases with answers, notes, etc. at metacosisperfectsnetis.com. There are more than 1,500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionados, where medicine makes perfect sense.